Okay, today's featured channel. It's going to be Jess, Rest in Grace. She does amazing videos. They're straightforward, scripture-based truth. She says the facts, and she backs it up with scripture. And I love her video. She gets a lot of views. Um, she doesn't mess around. She brings it straight truth. So uh, that's going to be the featured channel of the day, Jess. That's Jason's wife, um, and uh, it's Rest in Grace, the title of her channel. <clears throat> so for you ladies out there that want a boost in spirit, realizing that there is another sister that's um, uh, doing videos, that's great because it's a good comfort for you guys, for all of you in the body of Christ, a lift up in spirit in that respect. Um, Katie Holmes, she does videos, and there's, there's a few ladies here in the Ecclesia that are doing videos to help each other and build each other up. Sarah does videos. So, yeah, this is great to feature her for today's featured channel. Um, okay, so we've got chapter 31 of this book. It's the last chapter, and I wanted to share A Landscape of Glory by William Meeland. Now, I mentioned to, on a comment, I've seen that uh, Katie Holmes wanted some more expositors and writers. Well, he's an excellent one, William Meehlin. He was born in 1873 and went to repose in 1957. He goes into the heights when it comes to the Ephesian letter and the prison epistles. That's all I like about his writing. He focuses mostly on that which is above, which is our expectation among the celestials. And this is where I like to focus when I'm doing videos. It builds up in spirit rather than rips down and brings you down to this lower strata where the mortal and the dying is still continuing. I'd rather be in spirit next to God in Christ as far as focusing on that which is above, which is our celestial allotment that God has graced us with. <clears throat> I'm still congested a bit, so you'll have to excuse my reading and my sound. Okay, so as from time to time we read the Ephesian letter, we are moved by the quality of grace unfolded in its words. The eyes of the heart view indeed a veritable landscape of glory. We see that marvel of grace, our standing in Christ, our position of foreseen, fixed, unalterable union with him. God has chosen us. Prior to the disruption of the cosmos, we were chosen in Christ. Um, there's nothing you can do to get out of it. No matter how you feel, no matter what your feelings and your soul and your daily experience and the rough times and the hard times and the good times and the bad times and through the good, bad, and ugly, you were chosen. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you know this. You realize your calling. And this is why we're still here. We're still, in call, we're still calling out the members of the body of Christ. This is the purpose of these videos, to give you an expectation, to give you a realization of who you are. And this is my purpose, anyway, to, to give you an expectation of our celestial calling. It's not a terrestrial one like Israel. We're not going to be on this earth in that thousand years. I believe we'll be able to come here if we want, but I don't believe it's necessary. I still say that our training ground continues after this training ground among the celestials in the oncoming eons. We'll be reconciling celestial beings, spiritual beings, powerful spiritual beings. We will be bringing back through Christ, our brother, as part of his body <clears throat> among the celestial hosts. Thus seeing, we pass from scene to scene of unveiled glory. In the words of a saintly expositor, it is the light of Christ which shines upon these steeps and summits. He looks out upon the believing soul from the secret of the choice and the foreordination and the blessing and the acceptance which God graces each one with. That measure of belief, that measure of realization. <clears throat> It is no law of fate, quote unquote fate, no iron destiny which, with which we deal. 
It is the will of the Father, manifested and effected in the Son. Nothing there can, nothing there can be alien, really and ultimately, from eternal love, which is God's agape love. And that's the only way we can use that word eternal there, because God's love is continuing. It continues even after the consummation. When he becomes all in all, think about that, after the consummation, his love continues. He has a love for his creation beyond anything that we could ever imagine. Truly a landscape of glory, for it is not the ground, for is not the ground upon which we will one day stand. That of the on heavenlies, celestial, on heavenlies. That's the Greek elements, on heavenlies. It doesn't say on terrestrial, on soil. No, it says on heavenlies. Shall we not walk and talk thereon in verity and grace, ours because of his? He shares his glory with us. Even now, we are there in spirit. God seats us together among the celestials in spirit now. Next to God in Christ. He bids us live far off. He brings us nigh to privileges even celestials would fain behold. Think of, the, think of the resources, the endowments of God's grace. The qualities too of his will, his delight, his grace, and his glory. How they move to their great climax in the Beloved which is Christ, our Lord, our head. For it is through him that the plenitude comes and the fulfillment of grace as seen in the ecclesia, which is his body. Christ the head, his body, the vehicle, the and implement of the, of the Father's purpose in the realms above. Christ the head. Was there ever such headship? So wondrous why, so inviolate. How do you say that word? Inviolate. Inviolate, I guess. That's how you pronounce it. One supremely above all things. Put it that way. He cannot be touched in that respect. Above every sovereignty and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this eon, but in that which is impending, the future eons. Also, even such a one has lifted frail and obscure beings of earth to realms of celestial grandeur. In three expressive scenes, we see the distinction placed upon this unique company. Number one, it's transcendent choice by God and inception. And it's impressive witness. And number three, it's final faultless glory in Christ, flawless in Christ, complete and full. Compliment. What dignity of title, the ecclesia which is his body. This is an ecclesia chosen in a past unthinkable to science and given his sovereign seal in an august conquering hour of time. What cause for such an hour and what an amazing transcendent blessing to the universe, the sons of God. However, there is a scene of the living present an occasion for this honored community to cast a reflected glory above or upwards. See up, see up. Language could not be clearer or more explicit than that of Paul's in the very heart of his epistle, which is the Ephesian letter. The words are so in keeping with the Ecclesia's high destiny. Down the centuries, in a most blessed interval of grace, this momentous now has made a silent yet eloquent appeal. Should it not? In these last days, receive our deep attention. Let us inscribe them on the tablets of memory. May we never forget. Now, I'm going to share this here, and we'll read on tomorrow. That now, to the sovereignties and the authorities among the celestials, may be made known through the ecclesia the multifarious wisdom of God, in accord with the purpose of the eons, which he makes in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Beautiful. Beautiful words from the Ephesian epistle. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. And check out the featured channel.